FBI team found that police pursue policies vary widely from department to department. And so does the accountability for officers who sometimes take enormous risks during those pursuits. At speeds up to 120 miles an hour, Sharonville police race after a driver who had been clocked at nearly 100. The Sharonville police review of the chase noted this officer going southbound on I-75 was weaving at 115 miles an hour. A second Sharonville officer passed vehicles twice in a no-passing zone as oncoming traffic approached. And according to police notes, a third Sharonville officer went through a red light at 56 miles an hour. The pursuit in July 2015 ended when the speeding suspect took the Sharon Road exit and crashed into a car at the intersection. It was very traumatic. Cynthia Kennedy Edwards was driving the car hit by the suspect. She and her passenger were injured. Her car was totaled. I saw police. As Cynthia's husband drives us to the same intersection, she says memories of the crash haunt her. Just being in the car, even with him driving, it causes anxiety and I get chest pain sometimes from that. Um, so it's caused a lot of emotional stress for me. Sharonville police records show it was one of eight pursuits that year. During half of them, Sharonville officers hit speeds of at least 110 miles an hour, and five of the eight pursuits ended in crashes. Lieutenant Jim Nesbitt is the acting police chief. In the review of the pursuits, as I understand it, they were found consistent with policy that was in place at that time. Does that surprise you? That does surprise me. Sharonville changed its pursuit policy last year and increased training. This year, Sharonville officers have been involved in only one pursuit. Nearly half of the 40 police departments the I-team examined said they had disciplined police officers for their actions during vehicle pursuits. Most of those officers received verbal reprimands or counseling. Officers from Taylor Mill and Blue Ash ignored orders to terminate pursuits. They were given verbal reprimands. That's the type of thing you would expect to see in an agency that had a progressive discipline policy. Phil Stinson, an associate professor of criminal justice at Bowling Green State University, has researched police practices for decades. If there's no written policy or if the policy is very vague, you're not going to have much in the way of discipline. The I-Team reviewed 26 local police pursuit policies. Some, including Sharonville's, were vague. Their good judgment and reasoning has to come into play when they're making that decision in the field. Our officers have exhibited good judgment. Most police departments, particularly Cincinnati, Taylor Mill, and Fort Wright, provide stricter guidelines that suggest more accountability. The only pursuit that prompted an officer's suspension during the last four years was this one in 2015. Cincinnati officers collided with each other and the suspect got away. We should all be on the same page, not only in pursuits, but in most of the things that we do. Cincinnati Police Chief Elliot Isaac believes law enforcement agencies should get together and create a more common approach to pursuits. So it's something that I'm, I'm certainly willing to be a part of and, and even take the leadership role on to, to really try to, to see if we can have a more uniform policy in the region. But even in that one Sharonville pursuit this year, an internal police review found two officers reached speeds of more than 99 miles an hour on wet pavement, even though they lost sight of the vehicle they believed was stolen. The officers ran red lights going 30 miles an hour, then drove the wrong way on I-75 to reach police cars blocking the interstate, which the Sharonville police reviewer called a highly dangerous decision. The reviewing officer recommended extreme caution should be expressed to the officers. And those recommendations of the reviewing officer were, in fact, followed up on. But neither officer was disciplined. Can you think of a case where a Sharonville officer involved in a high-speed pursuit um, has been disciplined? I am not aware of any. They're saying that it's okay to chase people and nothing will happen to them. Cynthia Kennedy Edwards returned to the intersection where the suspect crashed into her car, hoping her story will convince police 
to slow down and reconsider the urge to race to justice. There's other means of pursuing an individual rather than a high-speed high pursuit and endangering others. Some police departments reference discipline in their pursuit policies. Fort Wright says an officer who ignores an order to terminate a pursuit will face a minimum 15-day suspension. And Taylor Mills says an officer who ends a pursuit for any reason, even if it's justified, will never be disciplined. Craig Cheatham, not on your side.